Hello everyone, let's continue with this series of video tutorials about Evergene. In this video, we'll learn how to create a basic component. Now, components are the elements that we'll use when we need to implement functionalities and keep states. Today, we're going to create a component that allows an entity to follow another one with some configurable parameter. Now, we've already prepared a scene with some elements such as the floor and a moving entity, but you can start from an empty scene. For this, we'll create an empty entity in the scene, which will position our character. Then we'll add a child entity, which will display the 3D model. This hierarchy allows us to adjust the model position in case it's not centered or aligned with the character. In this example, we'll use the teapot primitive, which we'll have to adjust in scale and position. We're going to add an example behavior to the character, which we'll move it in circles. We'll go into detail about this type of behavior in later videos. Now we already have a moving element in the scene. Now we're going to create the entity that will follow the movement of the character. We'll create an entity in charge of positioning our element in space and a child entity holding the 3D model. In our case, the 3D model will be a cone primitive. We move it slightly and rotate it to ease the visualization. We've named this entity Follower. There are different methods to find a component that belongs to another entity using code. In this case, we're going to use labels. From Evergene Studio, we'll tag our character and we move to the code. We'll expand the main project and create a new class, which we'll call Follow Up Component. This class must import the namespace Evergene.Framework and extend the component class. We're going to obtain the transform component of the target entity through its tag, but we want to be able to change this tag from Evergene Studio. So we'll create the target entity tag property as a string. There are several points during the lifecycle of a component where we can execute the search for an entity. Now we're going to override the onActivated method of the component, where we are sure that all the entities are loaded in the scene. Here we add the code to obtain an entity by its tag using the findAllByTag method of the Entity Manager. Among the components of this entity is the Transform3D that we need to track. We look for it in its component collection and store the result in a private attribute of the class. Now we need to subscribe to the position event. Within the method, we still need the transform component of the follower entity. For this, we're going to use a tool that we'll use a lot in Evergene when writing code, the bind component attribute. Evergene offers us this tool to ease the search of entities, components, or services using attributes. We're going to create an attribute that will automatically obtain the transform 3D component of the entity associated with this component. Now we can use the component's own transform 3D, and in the method we're going to update its position, simply assigning the position of the target to our own transform. Now we can use the component's own transform 3D, and in the method we're going to update its position simply assigning the position of the target to our own transform. We can see that when the target entity changes its position, it updates the position of the follower entity, but not its orientation. And we'll do the same with the corresponding property. In this video, we've learned how to create a basic component for an entity and update the position and rotation by listening to some properties of the transform component of another entity. If you like this tutorial and you want to continue learning more about this tool, be sure to check out the rest of the videos on the channel. See you soon!